On behalf of the Technological University of the Shannon Midwest, I'd like to welcome you all here this morning for this online induction for the Manufacturing Apprenticeship Summer Intake of 2023. We are delighted to welcome 28 apprentices from six companies across the Midwest. To be selected by your company as an apprentice for this program is a great achievement for all and shows that they see something special in all of you and they're willing to invest their time and resources to allow you to blossom into a new generation of engineers. Your industry mentors and academic supervisors will play a key role in cultivating the skills you require to return to education and to continue to progress along your apprenticeship pathway. The Modern Apprenticeship now offers new educational and career pathways for engineers up to level 9 master's degree and level 10 professional doctorate. The sky is the limit. Today is the first step on that ladder. This short presentation today will outline the basic requirements of the apprentice over the next six weeks as part of their initial block. It will also give the apprentice an indication of what preparations to make for the upcoming academic block. At the beginning of the academic block, you will have a second induction delivered by your lecturers, which will involve a tour of the workshops and facilities that you will be utilising in the college, and further details will be provided on the academic requirements of the programme going forward. Today we will give a brief overview of the programme structure, the initial block covering the next six weeks, and the preparations for the academic block. The first section we will look at is how the programme is structured over the two and three year duration. The Manufacturing Apprenticeship Level 6 Higher Certificate Programme is delivered in two Midwest over two years. The Level 7 Bachelor of Engineering can be attained by completing a third follow-on year in one of the programme's partnering institutes. Year 1 takes place over 58 weeks, commencing today with the initial industry block which lasts for six weeks. This is followed by the first academic 15-week block which will require your attendance on-site in the Tous Midwest Mylish campus. This is followed by the first industry block which has a total duration of 37 weeks. During the industry block the apprentice will experience a mix of academic and industry-based deliverables. The initial 15 weeks of the industry block will involve a collaboration of liaising with your academic supervisor while under the supervision of the industry mentor as part of these deliverables. The following 22 weeks will be solely under the supervision of their industry mentor, who will be responsible for ensuring the apprentice achieves all milestones set out by the programme during this period. Year 2 will commence with the second academic block, again with a duration of 15 weeks. The second industry block in Year 2 follows a similar structure to Year 1, with the first 15 weeks involving liaising with the academic supervisor on the academic and project work, and the remaining portion of the industry block under the sole supervision of the industry mentor. Should the apprentice wish to graduate with an exit award level 6 higher certificate, the program will finish after two years. Should the apprentice wish to continue the program on to achieve a level 7 Bachelor of Engineering award, the industry block will continue for a further six weeks, leading into the third academic block commencing in year three. Year 3 of the Level 7 Bachelor of Engineering programme can be pursued in one of the programme's partnering institutes and follows a similar structure to Years 1 and 2. Each of the three years are divided into four categories of modules. These range from modules like Mathematics and Science, which are 100% assessed during the academic block, to modules like CAD and Design, where assessment is a combination of work carried out during the academic block and reports on project work submitted as part of the industry blocks. As part of these modules, the apprentice will be supported one hour per week by their lecturer during the industry block. The fourth class of module is the industry module, which is solely assessed on project work carried out during the industry block, during which time the apprentice will be supported by their academic supervisor. At this stage, the industry mentors will have received their training and received clear guidelines as to their obligations to the apprentice and the milestones that need to be achieved by the apprentice throughout the duration of the programme. During the initial block, the mentor is required to review two reflective logbooks, review the initial report, schedule a trial one presentation in the company, and facilitate learning and offer guidance and direction to the apprentice. During the academic block, the industry mentor is required to attend the initial presentation in Toos Midwest and be available to discuss student progress, behaviour and attendance 
as required. To industry mentors, other responsibilities include proofreading the apprentice's work and discussing and providing academic feedback. Be able to discuss and support any issues that the apprentice may have. Identify behaviour that needs to change. Help apprentices to recognise their own individual strengths and weaknesses. Provide constructive feedback. Set projects that will stretch the apprentice within reason. Be clear on what the requirements are of the apprentice. And be able to take the apprentice back through an experience to help them evaluate it and recognise what could have been done differently. The next section is a guide for the apprentice on what is required during the initial block and how to prepare for the first academic block. A guide and learning plan template for the initial block has been developed which provides a brief overview of the preparations which the apprentices are required to make in advance of starting the first academic block in six weeks time. It also briefly outlines the apprentice's academic obligations during the initial block period. This document will be sent to all apprentices as part of an information pack following this induction. In the following slides, we will briefly cover the important headings, however the apprentices should review all documentation supplied as part of this information pack to get a full and clear understanding of what is required. As we prepare for a return to education the first academic block in September, it's important for apprentices to hit the ground running and get the best possible start. Should any apprentice have any learning difficulties, example dyslexia, or any other underlying conditions that may affect their educational experience, it is important that they make the teaching staff aware as early as possible. Provisions can be made to help alleviate any of these difficulties, but it is important for the apprentice to highlight any issues as early as possible. Toos Midwest has a designated learning and support unit which can provide additional academic assistance and tuition to students, in addition to assistance that can be provided by our lecturer. Many very successful engineers and professionals in all industries live with dyslexia and similar learning difficulties without any issue. The key is to identify it early so that it can be managed. Many people go through their lives undiagnosed. If you are having difficulty reading or putting your ideas down on paper, it is important that you get assessed by an expert for dyslexia. Information on the Learning Support Unit can be accessed through the TUS Midwest website. Click on Current Students. This will bring you to the student hub. Scroll down to the bottom. You will see important information for the students, including academic calendar, information on accommodation, student union, student services, and student support. Click on student support. This will bring you to the student support services page. If you scroll down to the bottom, it gives you important information that's accessible through student support services. This includes chaplaincy, counselling and the learning support unit. If we click on the learning support unit, it gives us information of current classes running through the learning support unit and if we scroll down to the bottom, we can click on first year students LSU workshops. This provides information specifically for first years there is an online request form where you can submit your details for your specific request. This section outlines the ICT services available to the students both on campus and online and the preparations that should be made by the students before they commence the academic block. Computers and information technology will play an important role during your time as a student. Many aspects of your life as a student will involve some IT either in the classroom, the library, the computer centre, in fact all over the campus. This section is a brief guide to help you get started with the different elements of IT that you will meet. The Computer Services Help Desk is located in the main computer centre on the Moylish Park campus. Any computer related problems that you encounter, such as issues with logons, printing, Wi-Fi connectivity or computer applications should be reported to the Help Desk. Calls can be logged via email or by phone or through the student portal. In addition to the computer labs which are used for teaching, there are hundreds of computers provided on the TUS campus for student use. These can be used at any time and are on a first come, first served basis. The main concentration of these is in the computer centre and library located on the ground and first floor of the main building. 
they are also available in the Students' Union building on the hill. Once a student has been successfully registered, a user account is automatically created for them within 72 hours. This allows you to log into any of the student computers around the Institute, including the Computer Centre, Library and any of the various computer labs. To log on to any of the computers on campus, your username is your K number and your password is, by default, your date of birth in the 8 digit format as shown. As part of your first industry block, it is important that the apprentice gets a handle on basic IT skills as quickly as possible. At a minimum, the apprentice should be confident navigating Microsoft Windows PC operating systems and have the ability to carry out basic operations such as creating, naming and storing new files and folders, etc. Both the academic and industry blocks will involve report writing, presentations and submissions of projects which will require the use of PC-based programs. The first industry block will give the apprentice the opportunity to hone these skills. Modules such as CAD will predominantly be PC-based, so it is vital that apprentices get to grips with keyboard and mouse skills as soon as possible. All apprentices will require a laptop for project work capable of running CAD software. If your company has not already provided a laptop, it is important that the apprentice highlights the need for one to their employer as early as possible in the first industry block. Most laptops in the €600 Euro or above price range available in the high street will be sufficient. The minimum requirements are running at least Windows 7, but preferably Windows 10 64-bit operating system, a minimum of 4GB of RAM, Intel Core i3 or i5 processor, 15-inch screen with Full HD, and a 3-button mouse is essential for CAD work. These can be purchased separately to the laptop. If a laptop is provided by your company, it is essential that the apprentice receives administrator privileges so that they can install any software should the need arise. Toos Midwest provide Eduroam as a wireless network for students. This service allows registered students access to the internet and online college resources using their personal laptops or smart devices from numerous places on the Toos Midwest campuses. To log into the Wi-Fi network, the username is your student email address and your password is your date of birth unless previously changed. To access the student portal, go to the website shown or scan the QR code. Once you have reached the student online portal, you will be prompted to enter your student email address. This will be your K number at student.lit.ie. Next, you will be prompted for your password, which will be your date of birth in eight digit format. If this is your first time accessing any of these services, you will be prompted to set up multi-factor authentication. Click next at the screen shown, tick the box to receive notification for verification, press setup and a QR code will be generated. The next step involves downloading the Microsoft Authenticator app to your smart device. For Android devices, scan the QR code on the left to go to the Google Play Store and for Apple devices, scan the QR code on the right to take it to the iStore. For demonstration purposes, we will go through the process on an Android device. After scanning the QR code or going to the Google Play Store, we install the Microsoft Authenticator app. Once installed, we then open the app on our mobile device. Having agreed to the terms and conditions on the opening page, we then click Add Account. Then we select Work or School Account and then select Scan QR Code. This will prompt the camera to open in your mobile device, allowing you to scan the QR code on screen. Having successfully scanned the QR code on your PC screen, you will now receive a notification on your mobile device. Click Approve to continue with the process. Now that the mobile app has been successfully configured, you can now click Next. You will be sent a second notification which you will have to approve in your app. Now that your multi-factor authentication is complete and verified, you can now access all the menus in the student portal. The next step to make your account secure is to reset your password. Click on the reset password tile. You will then receive a notification in the mobile app. Click approve. Then click yes to proceed. 
We are then prompted to enter the details of our mobile phone. Microsoft will send you a text message with a unique code which is used to verify your mobile number. You are then prompted to enter your backup email address which should not be your student or work email, it should be your personal email. Press email me and you will be sent a unique code which you will then enter to verify your backup email address. Click finish, then go to my account, then select the password option. You will be prompted to enter your current password which should be your date of birth in 8 digit format. Then enter your new password. It is recommended that it takes the format of at least 8 characters including at least one number and at least one special character. Confirm your new password and click submit. You will return to the My Account page. At the bottom there is an option for Office Apps. Click Manage. This will allow you to install the Microsoft Office Suite to your personal computer. Alternatively, if you return to the My Account homepage, the Office 365 Suite provides all of the apps online including Outlook, Excel, Word, OneDrive, etc. Other helpful services available in the student portal include student timetables which can be viewed for the full academic year. Also available is student self-service banner. This allows students to register for a program of study, pay fees and retrieve examination results. The pin to access student self-service banner will be sent separately to you by email by the admissions office. It is not the pin associated with your email. Access to your Moodle account is also available from the student portal. It is also available from moodle.midwest.toos.ie Once logged into your Moodle account, your list of already enrolled courses will be displayed on your Moodle dashboard under the course overview. If you find you are not auto-enrolled, please contact your lecturer or the help desk. The current version of the CAD software that apprentices will be using in the Toos Midwest Computer Labs and Workshops is SOLIDWORKS 2021 Service Pack 4. A student version of SOLIDWORKS is available for purchase at a discounted price from the link shown. Please follow the link or scan the QR code. A student version of Autodesk Inventor is also available for free download on confirmation of your student credentials. Student numbers and email addresses will be sent out by email to all apprentices as part of an information pack following this presentation. SOLIDWORKS may be a new experience for many apprentices. To assist the apprentices, it is advised to look at online tutorials and resources. For SOLIDWORKS tutorial videos, please follow the link on screen or scan the QR code. This section covers the mathematics revision and preparation that the apprentice should complete before they commence the academic block. The mathematics syllabus module in year one consists of nine sections covering arithmetic, algebra, matrices, complex numbers, trigonometry, vectors, differentiation and integration. In preparation for the mathematics module, the apprentice should look to purchase the recommended textbook. Basic Engineering Maths by John Bird, 2017 edition. It is advised during the initial block to review chapters 1 through 6 and chapter 9. This covers the fundamentals of arithmetic and basic algebra. This will give the apprentice a good foundation going into the first week of the academic block. The contents of the recommended chapters for revision are shown here. This includes revision tests 1 to 4, which should be completed during the first initial block. There are many free online helpful maths tutorials and resource websites including YouTube. One such website is canacademy.org. Please follow the link or scan the QR code. This link will bring you to the section covering arithmetic which covers chapters 1 to 3. This second link will bring you to the section covering pre-algebra which covers chapters 5 and 6. And this final link will bring you to the section covering basic algebra which covers chapter 9. If you follow the links or scan the QR codes given, it will bring you to one of the sections that you need to revise. If we scroll down through the page, you will see that there are numerous sections covering different topics. If we click on a topic, each topic contains numerous examples and questions. Each question comes with hints and instructional videos. 
so as not to waste time answering questions that you already know. The best strategy will be to scroll to the bottom of each section and answer the final quiz and see how you get on. Should you finish the quiz successfully, then you can move on to the next section, avoiding time wasted scrolling through questions that you already know. The recommended textbook for the Engineering and Electrical Science modules is Science for Engineering by John Bird, 2015 edition. This book also covers the mathematics theory for first year, and new copies are available on the high street for under 30 euros. Should you require them, there are free online science resource websites such as openstacks.org. For an example, please follow the link or scan the QR code on screen. The recommended calculator for this program is the Casio FX85GT. If you have not yet purchased one, there are several similar models available on the high street that offer identical functionality. The FX83GT only differs from the FX85GT in that it does not have the solar power option. The GT Plus version of both the FX83 and FX85 have been superseded by the GTX version. All four calculators offer the same functionality and operate almost identically. For apprentices who are not familiar with the operations of a scientific calculator, please ask your industry mentor for guidance or look at online tutorials for help. The initial block allows time for preparation for the first academic block, but it also gives the apprentice a taste of what is to come in the following industry blocks. This allows the apprentice to develop a good routine the apprentice should aim to have weekly meetings with their industry mentor. As part of the initial block, the apprentice is expected to complete two reflective logbooks. These should be submitted to your mentor for review and feedback. A guideline document with detailed templates of reflective logbooks will be provided as part of the information pack sent out to you by email after this presentation. As part of the initial block, the apprentice is required to submit a report which accounts for 25% of the Academic and Professional Skills module. This report is due for submission during the first academic block. The report consists of two parts, the first being an oral presentation which the apprentice will be required to develop and deliver a 10 minute Microsoft PowerPoint presentation to their academic supervisor and the Academic and Professional Skills lecturer. Fellow apprentices and their industry mentor may also be present. The second part consists of a written report using Microsoft Word, presenting the same material as the presentation with the same sections and headings, but going into more detail. Detailed templates for the initial report are provided and the same structure and marking scheme applies for all students. A sample of the structure and marking scheme is shown here. The template for the written report outlines how many pages per chapter, what the headings are for each chapter and subsection. It also details what percentage marks are available for each component. The template for the oral presentation again follows similar headings. However, along with marks for the content, marks are also available for the layout and quality of the PowerPoint presentation and the delivery. It also outlines how many slides are per section. The initial report, Word documents and PowerPoint presentation follow the same headings which include information on the apprentice's background, the company they work for, their role in the company, their initial block training and induction into their company, the role of science and mathematics in their company, how will they approach and manage their learning in the academic block, and what is their motivation and goal. Here is a brief summary of what the apprentice should hope to achieve in the six week initial block. They should collect information and type up their first draft of the initial report. They should hope to have a five minute PowerPoint presentation on the initial block that they should present to their mentor as a trial run. They should deliver two reflective log books to their industry mentor and receive feedback. In preparation for a return to education, the apprentices should hope to hone their skills in time management and self-directed learning. The apprentice should get to grasp with basic IT skills and the fundamentals of Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. They should aim to have a basic introduction to the math syllabus and CAD before the academic block commences. 
where possible, the apprentice should seek as much help from their company and industry mentor to achieve all of these goals. As mentioned earlier in the presentation, each year consists of modules which are assessed either completely in the academic block, or completely in the industry block, or a mix of the two. The apprentice has 28 hours of lecturer contact per week and should aim for 22 hours of self-directed learning each week. Year 1 consists of three subjects that are 100% assessed in the academic block. These include Mathematics, Engineering Science and Electrical Science. The next three modules, Manufacturing Engineering, CAD and Academic and Professional Skills are assessed 75% in the academic block and 25% is attained for work carried out during the industry blocks. The 25% for the academic and professional skills module is attained for the report carried out in the six week initial block. The quality one module is 50% assessed in the academic block and the further 50% is achieved for work carried out during the industry block. The industry module is 100% assessed on work carried out during the industry block. Year 2 follows a similar structure, however this time there are 4 modules which are 100% assessed in the academic block, 2 which are 75% assessed during the academic block and 25% in the industry block, 2 modules which are 50% assessed in the academic block and 50% in the industry block, and 1 module which is completely assessed for work carried out during the industry block. Should an apprentice choose to carry on for a third year to attain the level 7 Bachelor of Engineering degree, year 3 follows a similar pattern where four modules are assessed 100% in the academic block, one module 75% in the academic block and 25% in the industry block, three modules assessed 50% in both the academic block and industry block, and one module which is 100% assessed in the industry block. In preparation for the apprentice's first day on campus on the Toos Midwest Moilish campus, apprentices should familiarise themselves with the layout of the campus. Prior to the commencement of the academic block, in the coming weeks, the apprentices will be contacted by Toos Midwest staff by email with details of where and when to meet for their first day on campus for the start of the academic block and on campus induction. Toos Midwest Moilish campus is situated on the Old Cratler Road in Cardavan, just off the Moilish roundabout. It is accessible from all national routes via the Limerick Tunnel and N18. It is also accessible by bus for Limerick City. Student car parking spaces are limited and are charged at a daily rate. These are payable by pay and display on site or prepay by downloading the app. To download the parking app, please follow the links on screen or scan the QR code. Entering the main college entrance off the Moilish Roundabout, the south front entrance of the main building is on your left along with the Millennium Theatre. As we proceed north towards the rear of the campus, the canteen side entrance is visible on your left and just after the Harnet Centre up to the right is the hill which contains student parking and the student union's office. As we continue towards the rear, we pass out the all-weather pitch on the right. Just after that we have students pay parking on the right and on our left we have staff and disabled parking. Continuing to the rear, we pass the sports pitches on our right, which brings us to the rear north entrance. For students who wish to drive to the campus, the north entrance is the most easily accessible from the student car parks and is usually the first congregation point for new students on the first day on campus. To the right of the north entrance, you can see the prefab classrooms and the bicycle shed should any students wish to cycle to the campus. As we continue to the rear of the college, to the east entrance, we have further student car pay parking on our right and staff and disabled parking on our left. Continuing on, we have the Toos Midwest the Sports Hub and Gym on our right, which leads us back out through the east entrance. As we continue back towards the Moilish roundabout, the front south entrance of the main building is again visible on our left. If we enter through the front south entrance of the main building, we find ourselves facing down the street towards the rear north entrance. As we head down the street towards the north entrance, we have the main reception on our left. Just beyond that on our left, the corridor leads to the administrative office including the admissions, finance, grants and fees and exams office. It also leads to the workshops and the labs. 
continuing on on our right, we have a stairs that leads to the first floor and upstairs library. If we continue down the steps, on our right hand side, we have the entrance to the ground floor library, which houses the computer services and IT help desk and printing services. This is also the entrance to the main computer center and student computer labs. As we continue down the main street, We have the ATM on our left hand side. Just beyond the ATM on our left, we have another corridor, which also leads to the workshops and labs. Opposite the corridor on our right hand side, we have the entrance to the Aula Maxima. Just to the left of the entrance of the Aula Maxima, we have the stairs leading to the first floor, with toilets to either side. As we continue down the street towards the north entrance, we have the information desk on our left. Just beyond it on our left, we have the entrance to the estate's office and the pastoral care and chaplaincy. This open area just inside the north entrance is traditionally the meeting point on the first day on campus. Taking a sharp right and continuing up the steps, we have a stairs to the first floor on our right, and the toilets on our left, and the green room's canteen straight ahead. The main canteen serves hot food Monday to Friday from 8.30 to 4.30, with the coffee and deli dock remaining open until 8pm. I will now answer any additional questions that the apprentices may have. If there are any further queries during the initial block, please contact me at sean.conway at tus.ie.